So we have the basics of interest, as I told, why it is necessary to give interest. Why does a person have to pay interest? Either you lend or you borrow from somebody. You may go and deposit some amount in a bank. The bank keeps your money, obviously uses the fund to give the interest, to give, lend it out to somebody else, refinance, finance, whatsoever. So why should you, apart from the fact that your money is safe in the bank, you need to get some returns from the bank because the bank is using your funds to give loans to somebody else. So it is still a profit case for them. So the bank should be interested, you should be interested, hence the concept of interest. So basically, interest is a kind of a motivating factor for you to block some amount of money at a particular place or with a particular person or a particular institution or a financial institution or whatsoever. Then we have simple interest. Uh, now, simple interest is a very simple, as the name suggests, a simple kind of interest. In fact, the most common kind of interest which used to be given by money lenders in the olden days where there would be a flat rate of interest and the principal for a given period of time would remain the same. That means, suppose you bought a thousand rupees, it would remain thousand rupees throughout. So, which would be called the principal and the rate of interest would be fixed. So, as a result of which, the principal would remain the same for the entire period, say for three years, and the rate of interest would remain the same throughout the three years, and there will be no accruing of interest. The interest would remain as it is, and every year the interest would remain the same. That is, the interest in all in the entire period, annual interest per year would remain the same. It is called a simple interest. But generally, simple interest rates. Where, which are not very common these days are normally quite high right then we have the concept of compound interest now compound interest introduce the concept of interest on the interest at the end of every year in short it is a concept of accrued interests are involved that means during the first year, there is a certain principal and the principal earns a certain amount of interest. At the end of the year, that interest is added to the principal and that becomes the amount. And for the following year, whatever is the amount at the end of one year becomes a principal for the next year. So, we'll be taking up few problems based on compound interest. Then, since these are comparative forms of interest, we have the concept of simple and compound interest just for a comparison between the two so that the candidate can understand in what way it's going to be different. There are certain problems based on combination of simple interest and combined interest. Maybe the principal remain in the same rate being the same. There is a difference in the compound and simple interest. Hence, what is the principal? Problem similar to that. Then there is a change in the interest rate. In all the examples that we did today, there's a, in the previous ones, in covers, we normally are going to cover a fixed rate of interest. But there will be problems, whether it is a compound interest situation or a simple interest situation, that the rate of interest would remain. For example, you have lots of loans which are coming on floating interest rates. So the rate of interest could remain 8% in the first year. In the second year, the rate of interest would change to say 10%, then the rate of interest would come down to 9%. So every year, the rate of interest varies. In that case, what does the accumulated amount turn out to be? So we're going to take up situations similar to that. Then we have effective uh, rate of interest, which is going to be, what is the effective rate of interest? This would cover specifically in a situation of compound interest wherein over a period of time since there is an interest on interest say suppose you have 1000 rupees then at the end there is 10 percent interest at the end of first year you will have 1100 as the amount this becomes the principal for the next year and for the second year it becomes 1210 is at the end of second year so that becomes the principal so eventually it is the net interest is 210 so, you have to see what is 210 with respect to this. Similarly, in compound interest, there are also cases wherein although the interest rate is per annum, the compounding could take place quarterly. That means at the end of every three months, interest would be calculated and added to the amount over accumulated in your account, suppose in a bank. 
So in that case, in one year, the effective rate of interest is not going to be the same as whatever is a per annum interest because you are adding the interest again. So again, the effective rate could be different. Okay. Then there is depreciation. This is specially valued, valid for machinery. Because machinery, machines have wear and tear parts or even vehicles have depreciation. They have wear and tear parts, part moving parts. So their efficiency is bound to decrease over the years. So what is valued at 5 lakhs today after 2 years will not be 5 lakhs. So that's the reason why a second hand car costs much less than a first hand because there is usage. There is also a fall in its productivity and efficiency, which is not the true for land and other concepts. Land normally appreciates, even gold appreciates, the value appreciates because there is no moving part in it. Then you have the concept of annuity. We'll be taking up annuity. We're going to take up concepts of how you're taking a particular loan, which you intend to repay over a period of 20 years. So it is going to accrue some interest. So that accrued interest along with the accrued interest, what is the equal amount that you may have to deposit, you, that you may have to um, deposit with the financial institution to clear your amount. So that is called an annuity, that is an equal monthly installment or a annual payment that you make every year, which is going to be equal and going to be done at regular intervals of time. So the basic concept of an annuity general is that the amount that you're going to deposit or that is going to be deducted from your account is going to be equal and annuities are paid at regular intervals of time maybe once in six months or once every month fifth of every month or the fifth of january of every year so there is an equal period of time at which annuity is deducted then you have buying decisions that is when you want to buy a particular article so you compare its present value and its future value taking into account inflation and appreciation depreciation concept and accordingly you need to buy decisions so you what kind how what kind of a decision you will take whether to buy it whether it's a profitable uh, process or no so that is what is covered in buying decision we'll be taking up problems based on that Furthermore, buying decision also is very important in comparing two concepts. Say, for example, a bank decides to buy a premises, whether it would be profitable to block a certain crores of rupees in buying a particular premise, or whether it would be better for it to go in for a long lease for a period of time. Where, which will it be? Hence, there are so many concepts involved, blocking of money, appreciation of property, whether the bank is facing what kind of a situation that is going to continue to do very well. So which would be better to lease out a particular property or to buy that particular property? Much the same way, suppose a person is running a factory or a manufacturing unit. There are facilities wherein he can even rent out a particular piece of machine, which could be a high investment case or whether it could be better to buy that machine, maybe you may have to block an initial amount. So considering the depreciation process and the amount of money he blocks after 20 years, will the machine be as valuable as it would have been if it had been taken on rent and compare it with the cost of production, the profitability, so many issues involved which will help the manufacturer to decide whether to buy that machine or to take it out on rent. And we're going to also take mistake problems here. So in mistake problems, we are basically going to cover uh, certain cases wherein the bank may tend to uh, may take a case of it may clearly tell on document that it is giving an interest rate of 6%, but while calculating, it ends up calculating 8%. So obviously, the person who is taking a loan is at a disadvantageous position. So how can the bank rectify this particular mistake and give transfer the benefit on to the person who's taking the loan? Those kind of problems shall be taken up in mistake problem. So this is what we roughly intend to cover in this particular chapter. So we'll be taking them step by step. So we'll move ahead.